What's up, Midas Mighty, and welcome to the Midas Touch Podcast. Ben, Brett, and Jordy coming at you live if you're watching it on YouTube. We're coming on wherever podcasts are available. Otherwise, we have a great show for you. We have investigative journalist, the New York Times best-selling author, Kurt Eichenwald is going to be joining the podcast. And I don't know if you know this about Kurt, and I'm interested to ask him. He did a uh, book for Scribd Books about the anti-vaxxer movement and kind of predicted to a T what was going to happen. This was in April, where I think we started to see that fermenting. Um, But he had an interesting book about that. And brothers, just wanted to say this, and I'm not sure if y'all realize it or not, but today, essentially, it was actually two days ago, but it fell on a weekend. But today, as we're recording this, marks the one year anniversary wow. of the Midas Touch podcast. Wow. Count our days at Sirius. That's pretty wild. It's been quite a journey, everybody. Well, first, I, I got to thank everybody for joining us. I could have never imagined even a year ago that anybody would, you know, want to listen to us for an hour and deliver you the news and never thought I'd be doing a podcast and be able to just speak with you directly and build this amazing community. So thank you so much to everybody who's joining us, everyone who subscribes to the podcast, who watches us live. It's truly such an honor, and I'm, I'm so humbled by all the support. Um, as you probably remember, and I'm sure there are a lot of you who remember us from the Sirius XM days, we actually started this on Sirius XM where they had reached out to us and said, Hey, you know, we like your guys chemistry. We like what you guys are all about. We'd love for you to have a show, had a great experience with Sirius XM and then decided, you know what, let's take this podcast directly to the people and have everybody be able to listen, whether they have a subscription or not, because our whole platform is a democratized platform where everybody gets to see everything we do and everybody gets access to all of our content. So what better than a podcast that everybody could listen to? And it's been the experience of a lifetime. And it's, you know, such an honor to be able to do this with you guys, honestly. Absolutely. No, it, this has just been such an incredible, a- incredible year. Like I'm just still in awe. I can't believe it's been a year. You know what? Yeah. I, and we've kind of been talking, you know, talking about this a little bit more when I, when I ask people, cause I frequently tweet out, Hey, who do you think, who would you want to listen to on the Midas Touch podcast? You know, I get actually a lot of duplicates suggestions of people who've already come on the pod. I'm thinking maybe down the line, not next week, but down the line, we maybe do like a, a couple best of episodes where we bring back some of the interviews that, that people really haven't heard. That's really funny you say that because a lot of people are like, you got to get Beto O'Rourke on the podcast. Yeah, I'm like, we've like, had, we had him on the show. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to have him on again, but no, we have some great shows in the archives. Maybe we will do like a best of sort of compilation soon and just remind everybody all the amazing guests. But once again, we're so appreciative. And the reason we're able to do this is because you all follow and subscribe and support our sponsors and all that. And because you tell friends and please just keep telling friends about this show. If you tell two people about this show, they may tell two people about the show. And then we are just, that's how we grow this movement. That's how we grew the Midas Touch movement and got boots on the ground and were able to make an impact on the election. And that's how we can make an impact on this podcast space. So please continue to tell a friend about the Midas Touch podcast. And I will say all of the Midas Touch podcasts out there. Let's get into the news. Quote, we have have strong reason to believe there could be other indictments coming, attorney Brian Scarlato said at a pretrial hearing in New York State Supreme Court. Attorney Scarlato represents Alan Weisselberg, the former chief financial officer of the Trump organization, believing that more indictments are coming. Doesn't say who, but there's obviously a investigation underway within the Manhattan DA's office. Weisselberg, as of yet, has not reached any form of plea agreement. The latest news is that he could be facing around 15 years in prison if convicted or potentially more. Out of this reporting also, three million new documents were found in a co-conspirator's basement. I mean, this just goes to show you, though, the Trump organization. You'll recall a lot of the documents in the relating to the Weisselberg indictment, if you recall, 
was in a family member's like garage that was turned over to the DA's office. So apparently the Trump tax documents and their corporate books and records are basically held <laughs> in various people's garages and sheds and things like that. It just goes, does that surprise you in any way though? No, the organizations run like shit. I mean, we all, we all knew this, everybody has known this, but Ben, what was that? What was the quote that the attorney for Alan Weisselberg said? Can you read that one more time for me? We have strong reason to believe there could be other indictments coming. Wait, was that indictments plural? Because I think that, that is an interesting thing to note there. I mean, there are other, uh, uh, I was going to call them leaders of the Trump organization, but I think that's being a little generous. But there are other executives. I think you call them, are they shaman now? They're, shaman. Uh, <laughs> there are other uh, Trump uh, organization some, uh, shaman. Some QAnon uh, shamans and, in the admin. <laughs> and, you know, we've all heard the name Matthew Calamari at this point. There are other executives who are probably expected to be indicted. And then, you know, the other people who are executives or were executives until very recently include people like Donald Trump Jr., uh, Ivanka Trump, Eric Trump, and of course, Donald Trump himself. And so these are the people in the crosshairs right now, and uh, we'll have to see what happens here. But things are moving Weisselberg in court this morning. This is a big development to this case. I know everybody is probably a little tired of hearing, up. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. But <laughs> this is just one step closer to that fact. Things are moving along. And I don't know if this is going to... Yeah, come on. Now, I don't know if this is going to stick, but go on, Jordy. Jordy, go on. Now, I don't know if this is going to stick. Go on, Jordy. Go on. <laughs> Sorry, Jordy. Go for it. <laughs> oh, come on. Stop, Jordy. Okay, now, now Jordy, I, you, go you're, you're going to do it again. I'm not going to no, do it. No, it's again. not. It's be not. Mature. Be now, I don't know if this is going to stick, but I think we might be too kind calling it the Trump organization. We should be calling it the Trump disorganization. Oh, oh, I love that point. Hey, you should call it the Trump disorganization. Um, speaking of judges, I like it. Jody. Speaking of disorganizations, have you seen the this wacky Breitbart op-ed, oh which God. reflects the general view, I think, of just how crazy the GQP right whatever you want to even call them now has become. So they did an op-ed that basically said there is a massive conspiracy going on and Democrats are telling people to get vaccines so that the right wing will not get vaccines because the right wing naturally will never do what Democrats tell them to do. And therefore, they are what the Democrats are trying to do is kill off Republicans by telling them not to get the vaccine, yeah. by telling them to <laughs> get the vaccine. But let me read the actual this is quote. The, so, you know, this is the craziest let me, let me give you a This is like 60 chess over here. The organized left is deliberately putting unvaccinated Trump supporters in an impossible position where they can either not, in caps, get a life saving vaccine or can in all caps, feel like cucks caving to the ugliest, Jesus. smuggest bullies in the world. Uh, the interesting use of the word cucks in an op-ed piece, by the way, <laughs> is one of the most absurd things. Um, but it's a little bit of projection because I think that is actually how the GQP feels about themselves. They know they're cucks. Well, I think they, ga they gave away the entire game of what it means to be a Republican in 2021 with this. And the game is anything Democrats want to do, we will not do. They are just contrarians at heart. That's their entire ideology. And you could bring that back to literally everything. Go back to Dr. Seuss, go to Mr. Potato Head, go to the whole situation with Megan Markle. It's just so wild and, as you say that, Brett, that those saying. were their issues. The Republican issues so far, Mr. Potato Head, Dr. Seuss. Megan Markle, Nicki Minaj. It's all about don't, whoever. Don't take the vaccine. But, but you, know, you, know, you, you know one of the things I was thinking, though, and this is why things are so difficult for Democrats, because Democrats are held to the most impossible standards and Republicans are held to none. And that includes by their own base. And let me just elaborate for a second um, while I'm on this point. So when, de when Republicans are elected into power, basically all they need to do if they have control of the House is do fucking nothing. And their voters are happy. Like they could just sit on their asses and just say no to everything that's pitched by the Democrats and their voters will be extremely happy. 
but Democrats have to pass not only legislation, but like the most pivotal, most important legislation ever for anybody to be happy with what they do. Like they need to pass historic voting rights reform. They need to pass not only an infrastructure bill, but the biggest, most history defining infrastructure bill in the world. Obama, they had to pass yes, Obamacare Obama can- so you can deal with 30 years of the GQP <laughs> saying, no, how dare you do it? How dare you do it? Absolutely not. Actually, that's kind of okay. That's kind of okay. That's kind of okay. But now we hate this. Yeah. And they have to get out of a war that's been going on for 20 years. Like everything Democrats have to do, they have to do and they have to execute it perfectly. And the GQP could just sit on their asses all day and their voters are happy because they don't want any fucking thing to happen in this country. All they want to do is piss off liberals. And that's the only connecting tissue in their ideology. And that's why we used to also like politicians, I feel like used to be like parents in a way to the country. And they used to tell the country a little bit what's good for them and what's not good for them. And even Republicans, I'm going to include in this, like if a Republican spoke out and had this anti-vax sentiment and say there was a President George Bush or a John McCain in charge, the Republicans would push back and they'd say they would push those voices to the fringe. You know, those voices exist in their party. They would push those voices to the fringe. But now it's almost like the cool stepdad has come in and he's like, oh, fuck, you don't want vaccines? Fuck vaccines. Oh, you want to go harass restaurant employees? Go for it. Have fun. Do your thing. And this is like the new ideology of the Republican Party. It's just like, yeah, go crazy. Do what you want. Cause chaos. We're not going to tell you how to behave. We're not going to tell you how to be human beings. We're actually going to encourage this bad behavior. Yeah, it's the exact opposite of personal responsibility. No, I like all of that. The only thing I would change there is instead of the, the, the cool stepdad, I would call it the, the chaos agent stepdad. I don't yeah, even want to give him that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, go, go, yeah. You want to fucking destroy that restaurant? Fuck yeah, throw some chairs through the window. Do it, man. Have fun. It's like, no, you're supposed to, as a leader, you're supposed to be like, you know what? I don't, you don't want to get into trouble. You shouldn't do that. You know, perhaps you shouldn't be getting kicked off airlines and screaming at, at employees. You know, this, these are bad things actually for America. Perhaps you should take a life-saving vaccine, which you have taken literally your entire life since birth. Perhaps you should try that. How about that? I, I'm not sure I get the stepdad reference, but here's my re- <laughs> here's the reference. <laughs> I don't know the cool stepdad. I'm not sure if that's even really a thing, but I'll I'll, I'll accept I'll, I'll accept the analogy and try to Google just accept cool it. Just, a, just accept it. Just accept it. Just accept it. Chaos is a cool thing. Stepdad. But I think the best way to describe it would be like the camp counselor who's supposed to be there to protect and help people, but instead the camp counselor is like, you want to smoke smoke a joint you want to get you want to get you want to get high a little bit you know you, know, you, you guys should, should want, want to drink some alcohol to like I underage some, kids i got you know, some horse a, meds you want some horse meds i got, I got some i got i got some <laughs> ivermectin i got some i've i got some i've um but look let's look at what the numbers are showing as they write you know, this crazy GQP echo chamber reinforcing their delusional ideas that are killing themselves. This is even a Fox News poll that came out 54 percent favor and 44 percent oppose requiring proof of vaccination for indoor activities. So in other words, having a vaccine passport is actually, and these are people who are responding to a Fox News poll, and this is up 4% since August. The same Fox News poll also shows that 67% of Americans or people who responded to this poll who probably skew more GQP-ish support mask mandates in schools. And this also resembles the data we had out of California. And not only did people say that Gavin was doing a good job, but there was a lot of people saying we need stricter mask mandates in school. And for the GQP, the issue of masks as a political policy, the issue of vaccines for them, It's like a fucking game with these people. Like they are, in the words of Congressman Swalwell, playing WWE characters. These GQ politicians are, and they're playing to the base that goes and sees their performances. 
But let's not forget those people who stand on those single file lines where everyone goes, oh, look at what a big line. Yeah. If you put 10,000 people in a line, it's going to look like a long fucking line. That's not like a shocking deal. But those 10,000 people in a state of 34 million people is not a large number. That is what we call an outlier within an outlier. And most Americans at the end of the day want to send their children to safe schools. Most Americans want to be vaccinated the same way that 90% of Fox employees are vaccinated and Fox has the vaccine, the vaccine mandate and vaccine passport requirements. Guess what? Most Americans in the privacy of their home are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want my son dying. I don't want my daughter dying. I don't want my siblings dying. And that's what's at issue. That's why the GQP policies are loser policies. And there's big news on the horizon that it looks like ages five through 11 might be approved for for the Pfizer vaccine. So that's not officially stamped and, and signed off on. But I know that's been reported today early on. That'd be great. I know parents are eagerly awaiting to be able to get their kids vaccinated. And I saw once again, these, you know, right wing nut jobs start going, oh, now they want to vaccinate kids as young as five. It's like, uh, yes, they've actually been vaccinating kids from birth for a very long time for viruses and diseases. This is not a new fucking thing. Like, are it's you so weird? These this are is so this Laverne. Weird. I don't even know her name. She ran for Congress in Florida and just got her ass kicked. But I'll pull up the chart right now of the CDC uh, vaccination plan, because literally from birth, from birth, children get a hepatitis B we the, vaccine. We get that jab. We get, get that, that jab. jab. We get, you get microchipped at birth. The kids get the 5G right away. No, I'm joking. Um, and then uh, you take more really through your first 18 months. You're taking many vaccines, hepatitis B, rotavirus, uh, tetanus, a lot of things I can't even pronounce, the flu vaccine. <laughs> I mean, th- there are a whole host of vaccines that we've been getting our entire, literally our entire lives. And anybody making this this argument has probably them themselves been vaccinated from birth because this is how we have eradicated disease and this is how we have reduced the child morality rate. But that's why I think every single election going forward, I think the Republicans have tied themselves to death. They are the party of death. They are the party of killing you. They are the party of killing the elderly. And they are the party of killing your kids. And I think that message needs to be front and center in every single election going forward. And I would argue it was front and center here in California. I think as we go for elections in Texas, I think that needs to be front and center when you have a murderous governor hell bent on killing people in Texas. I think that needs to be front and center in Florida as people send their kids to schools and kids are getting COVID in record numbers. These governors want to kill you. The Republican Party is the pro-death party and people do not want to die. And that message needs to be hammered home every single day. Did you see Brad Governor Tate Reeves, the Mississippi governor? He went on Jake Tapper and he was asked, other than Peru, if Mississippi was a country, you would have the worst COVID statistics in the entire world if it was a country. And Governor Tate Reeves doesn't answer the question, really. His response basically is, it's a virus. These are viruses and viruses do virus things. And Tapper's like, he's like, well, you're not really, what are you going to do better? What are you going to do to improve this? No answer. And And there's no answer. Well, just play the clip first. Mississippi this week became the state with the worst number of coronavirus deaths per capita. In fact, if Mississippi were its own country, you would be second in the world only to Peru in terms of deaths per capita. That's a horrible, horrible, heartbreaking statistic. So with all due respect, Governor, your way is failing. Are you going to try to change anything to change this horrible statistic from what you're doing already? Yeah, well, obviously, the, in Mississippi, our legislature is a part-time legislature. Sometimes I wonder if in, a, in America, if our Congress was part-time, we wouldn't be in a better position. But let's talk a little bit about better position uh, than Mississippi what? and where Your we are with the virus. Second, wor- <clears throat> second worst in the world. If Mississippi were a country, you would have the second worst per capita death toll in the world. And I'm saying, are you going to do anything to try to change that? Jake, as as I mentioned earlier, 
deaths, unfortunately, are a lagging indicator. It gets worse and worse from there. He starts off by saying this is his defense is that the Mississippi legislature is only a part time legislature and they don't really work very much. And maybe the country would be better if if the country had a part time legislature and tech goes better than what? Better than what? Your state is the worst per capita. And if it were a country, it would be second in the world. So better than what? And this guy just rambles on and on. He starts talking about other sorts of COVID treatments that he would like. And Tapper goes, well, what are you going to do, though, to help this these COVID cases? What are you going to do to help mitigate the COVID deaths in your state? And Governor Reeves has nothing to say. Nothing. And the, the, the crazy uh, debate now that these GQ peers basically are, are advocating for is that because the federal government is trying to make sure that monoclonal antibody therapies are available to all states, not just hoarded in GQP states, that you're taking away monoclonal antibody therapy from these GQP states. But the issue is, is that because the GQP states are spreading the disinfo, the monoclonal antibody therapy, as I understand it, is used when you actually get yeah. COVID. It's not the remedy before COVID. And so the issue is, if you actually follow the science, you, these so these few states shouldn't be hoarding the monoclonal antibodies when they're when they're filling up their ICUs because. They're spreading this info about vaccines. And depending on circumstances, it can be a, a pricey treatment. But, I'll, you know, I'll say right now, I support these uh, antibody Absolutely. treatments 100%. Yeah. I'm all for these treatments. People should be able to get these treatments when they get COVID, 150%. Nobody is against that. Zero people are against that. What we Zero. want, though, is we want people to get vaccinated beforehand so that they don't need the treatment. If we could get to the issue at the source, they don't need to get these treatments. Let's eradicate the issue at the source. Yet these Republican governors have a death wish. They are the pro-death party and they are actively, whether it's because they're scared of their voters, whether it's because they're just uneducated themselves, I don't know what exactly they're going for, but the result is they are killing their own citizens and they have no answers for it. None. And let me just say this real quick and then I'll probably get a lot of shit for it, but look, great job by Jake Tapper there. You know, he's been getting a lot of shit lately, rightfully so. But that time, in that moment, he really stepped up to the plate. I don't think you're going to get any shit for that, Jordy. Um, it was a good interview that he did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll get shit for that one. Um, and I think lots of people love the reporting of Jake Tapper. And you know what? When you're on the front lines like that, like you are a Jake Tapper, there's a lot that you do. There's, you, you're constantly on live TV. You know, you're constantly speaking on difficult issues. You know, you're not going to get it right all of the time. But, you know, I think Jake Tapper does strive in all of his reporting to be fair and ask tough questions and does a very good job. One thing just to, to mention quickly, um, looking at the poll numbers, the Dallas Morning News and the University of Texas poll shows that 54 percent majority of Texans believe the state is headed in the wrong direction, while just 45 percent think the state is on the right track. You may recall that Governor Abbott of Texas, his approval rating before COVID-19 was about 59 percent. And in that Dallas Morning News article, they linked the decline in support for uh, Governor Abbott to his hard right turn of resisting mandated safety precautions for COVID, which has claimed over 60,000 lives in the state and his hard right positions on abortion and gun control, uh, attacking political opponents. I mean, they're really turning Texas into this dystopian state. We see the same thing in Florida. And also to all the Virginians out there, to all the Virginians out there who are listening to this, Youngkin, who has the Republican nominee in Virginia, he's a big supporter of DeSantis. He openly embraced Trump, you know, that he's going to turn Virginia into exactly what you're seeing here. Um, you know, and so definitely watch out for Youngkin and make sure that guy is not elected uh, in any meaningful way. Brett, what's up, Ben? Before we bring on our yeah. guest, Kurt Eichenwald, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the Wild Alaskan Company. 
Ooh. Ben, do you think of Wild Alaskan Company because these governors are acting kind of fishy? Because I, I want to talk to you about some good Transition, fish. Transition, Let me baby. talk to you about some good fish, guys. Oh, that's way for my bib for that, then. Your bib. Your bib. Hey, what is the bib? <laughs> if we're going to be is, talking about, if we're going to be talking about some seafood, is that a is that a floaty? Are you catching it yourself, Jordy? Why don't you just read the ad? I just want to hear. I, wait, I, I know we're doing the ad read, but Jordy, this is important. One for those listening, Jordy just put on a Superman bib, and Jordy. Explain to me, though, your view of why you'd be wearing a bib every time you eat fish, when you, you wear eat a bib seafood. You eat, you wear a bib. Is that when, a life vest? When you eat just a bib? seafood, <laughs> you wear a bib. You guys don't do okay. that? All right. I have no idea what's going on with Jordy, <laughs> but let me ask you guys a question out there. I have a lot of questions for Jordy, but did you know that most grocery store seafood you eat was frozen and then thawed just to present to you as fresh? Because fresh doesn't always mean best. Start enjoying your seafood with flavor preserved at the peak of freshness with Wild Alaskan Company. Wild Alaskan Company delivers high quality, sustainably sourced, wild caught seafood right to your door or right to Jordy's bib. Each shipment contains pre- Premium cut. What is happening here? Uh, contains premium cuts of individually wrapped portions of delicious seafood that are ready to prepare and cook. And you could choose from a wide variety of fish, including salmon, cod, halibut, or more, or do a combination of them. I'm personally a white fish guy, so I didn't do the salmon. I got some cod, I got some halibut, I got some rockfish, and it's all just delicious, guys. And every month there are different specials to explore. Wild Alaskan Company seafood is how nature intended it to be. It is always wild never farmed or modified, and it contains no antibiotics. You could adjust, pause, or cancel your membership anytime, and they offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee or your money back. And right now, you could get $15 off, $15 off your first box of premium seafood when you visit wildalaskancompany.com slash Midas. That's Wild Alaskan with an N, W-I-L-D-A-L-A-S, K-A-N company dot com slash Midas M-E-I-D-A-S for $15 off your first box. Wild Alaskan company dot com slash Midas. Make sure to use our URL to let them know that we sent you and get your $15 off today. Jordy's bib not included. <laughs> I don't know I what's I just want to say this before we bring in <laughs> Kurt Eichenwald. I really enjoyed, I had uh, uh, tacos. I had fish tacos from the Wild Alaskan Company. But I do want to say this and make sure everybody goes to Wild Alaskan Company. Reach out to them on social media. It helps us. Tell them that you heard about them for Midas. Use the code Midas. But I just want to make this observation about Jordy. I don't think Jordy knows how to eat fish generally. And let me explain to you why, Jordy. The seafood bib is for eating shellfish. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like lobster <clears throat> and crab and things like that. You sure. eat, you use your Superman bib when you're just having like, like whitefish? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. On that note, let's bring in <laughs> investigative journalist and New York Times bestselling author and author of a new book on Scrib Books, The Big Lie, The Modern Anti-Vaxxer Movement. Check it out. Kurt, welcome to the Midas Touch podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. And thanks for your support of Midas Touch. We appreciate you sharing the videos. You were there from a very early stage, so we just want to thank you for that. That you guys were great. So <laughs> really like day one, I remember seeing Kurt liking our stuff and I was like just so appreciative and so we're grateful like, for it. So like if Kurt's like, so maybe, maybe we are doing something right. right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Kurt, I want to talk about the book on Scrib Books, The Big Lie, the modern anti-vaxxer movement. This book came out in April, which was kind of right before we saw I think this anti-vax, evangelical, Trump, QAnon kind of mixture ferment into this, you know, well-known movement. But you were writing about it in April. So what did you see then and what are we seeing now? And is it consistent with what you saw back then? Well, the book was was talking about in sort of the broad sense was where it started to evolve. And it started with this schmuck, Andrew Wakefield and his lie about uh, vaccines cause autism and followed through. And then you ultimately get to this bizarre blending around 2015 of the alt-right and the anti-vaxxer movement, which was really an attempt by the alt-right to sort of find its way into, I believe, an established vehicle online because the 
the anti-vaxxer movement had a really strong presence online. And so you start to see this blending of Trumpers and neo-Nazis and and racists and anti-vaxxers. And they're all this big, you know, you can you can automatically tell, you can look at somebody and say, that's going to be an anti-vaxxer and be right about 80% of the time. And then it sort of wraps into white conservative evangelical Christians, which again has another element to it that was largely predictable. I was surprised that people were surprised. The one element where I was surprised (laughs) myself in terms of reactions was that the Republican Party just went, great, let's take advantage of this. Um, and has just been relentlessly lying. And, um, you know, I look at it and I can only think that they have made a a calculation, which is, you know, they have made a lot of progress off of tribalism, off of making out, you know, the Democrats are evil incarnate and, you know, you have no cooperation And, you know, people look at the numbers and the numbers are horrific. And, yeah, the numbers are mostly in the red states. But if they were to come out, look what happened when Trump said vaccines are, you know, you got to get vaccinated. They booed him. So, you know, go ahead. Don't get vaccinated. Die. We can lose your vote. We've got a lot of votes out there in Texas and Florida. We're okay. We got millions of them. I, I mean, that's the only thing I can comprehend. You know, that if they came out and say, let's worry about public health, Democrats might win. (laughs) So I I can't otherwise figure it out. They're not stupid people. But they're acting very stupidly. And I think it is reflecting in the polls that while there is this kind of tribalistic view and perpetuating the big lie by an entire political party, I do think that represents a smaller and smaller portion, but an ever louder and louder, smaller portion of the United States. Do you see at all, Kurt, the tide turning in any way in terms of as there are testing requirements, mandates require having to treat some of these people like they're babies, unfortunately, you know, when these people want to go out there and try to kill others. Do you see, though, the tide turning or do you see it getting worse? The reason I see the tide turning is, you know, people look at the death numbers. And one of the things you people forget about the death numbers is not that, okay, there's another person who's dead. They're off the list. It's there's a person who's dead that has a family that has friends. And of that group, maybe 50% have been, you know, convinced. Um, there is there is an issue that people uh, are confronted, you know, with a, with a, there's a psychological issue where if you believe something and you're confronted with even an, a personal experience reality that you will deny the reality to stick with your beliefs. So it's going to go slowly. I think there is sort of a, a almost a blue state firewall because, you know, as you move up, people are not that invested in, in this craziness, this anti-vax craziness in in blue states. And, you know, so it will spread further. We will have problems in blue states, but when it happens, then you're going to have a rapid, this is my expectation, you're going to have a rapid dial back of numbers. I don't know what's going to happen in the Southern states. It depends on how many people are evangelized by the death of relatives. I mean, I live in Texas. There's somebody I know who has, you know, not particularly well educated. I I, I won't say what this person does for a living, but trust me, absolutely no connection to science whatsoever. And caught COVID 
but still wouldn't get a vaccine because, you know, it will change your DNA. Well, guess who's out there selling that? Andrew Wakefield, the guy who lied about vaccines cause autism. You know, you, you've got people who are Please, making but also Ron out. DeSantis. Like he has a yeah, guy right well, next to him I mean, spouting the same yeah. bullshit. That's somebody it, who runs a state government. I mean, this is the thing. All of these people are pretending to be experts. And, you know, I'm not an expert. What I am smart enough to say, these are experts over here. Listen mm-hmm. to them. I was this, I am the son of an expert. My father was a, a pediatric infectious disease specialist who worked for the CDC and who literally, you know, saved continents in, from epidemics. And he'd go to Bolivia and he'd go to uh, Vietnam and he'd go, you know, and he'd go to Africa. And he would always tell these stories of the difficulty they had in terms of combating epidemics uh, because of not just a lack of education, but because of people's need, this this need they had um, built on a fear of the unknown to have this sense that they had a control over it. And that was, you know, coming from governments, you know, third world governments where the, the leaders would say, you know, you are trying to impose, you know, X, Y, Z on my people. And, you know, you go back, everybody knows the stories of the African tribes and the African governments in various different parts of uh, that continent that blamed the doctors for AIDS. Well, what states are blaming Fauci for COVID? You know, an international problem is, you know, a doctor in, in, in the United States responsibility. He caused it. You know, it's the same thing. Uh, you now have this thing that's transitioning, which is a, is something that has started in the last four weeks. It's a very dangerous sign that has grown out of the ivermectin thing. Mm-hmm. The relatives of patients taking the, the, their relatives to the hospitals and then demanding that they give them ivermectin to save them. Well, you know, ivermectin, in in order to have any impact, a modest impact on in a in a laboratory uh, with ivermectin, you have to give ten times the safe dose for a human being. You know, you you have to kill them in order for ivermectin to, to have an effect. I mean, that's what they've done. That's how these people have come up with the oh, it works. Because if you use it in a test tube on the COVID virus and you keep escalating, 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 eventually it kills the virus, but it does so by, you know, in a level that would kill the host, that being the human being. And so, you know, it's been amazing to me to see what my father talked about at our dinner table, where I looked on it as, you know, oh, this is third world, blah, 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 playing out in the United States for the exact same reasons. I mean, Kurt, I recall, you know, given one reference in particular in South Africa from 1999 to 2008, under the leadership of Thabo Mbeki, he denied that HIV caused AIDS Mm -hmm. um, and spread a ton of disinformation out there. That led to about 343,000, 365,000 preventable deaths there. Here in the United States now with COVID, we're getting close to, what, 700,000 deaths and and many of those preventable. The difference is... America was the leader and we tried to be the ones internationally saying no, 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 and and trying to change the tide. Now you have a Republican Party that's saying basically the same rhetoric that other nations that we tried to help improve their health care policy are saying. And you had to go back. You had to you really had to look at how each of these entities, how these denialisms, how these how these things took place and what you found in all of them, why the doctors became the enemies. And it was always because I I was saying before we went on the air that, yeah, I could say it would be Christian evangelicals, Southern Christian evangelicals, because um, it was all built on a sense of tribalism. 
Great example, you had polio when you had salt vaccine and then Sabin developed, you know, took it the next step further with the sugar cube. Polio was was wiped out, but not in India, because there you had a large Muslim population that they had a shared uh, conspiracy theory that these Western doctors were using this sugar cube to cause impotence in the future, in the children who would grow up uh, and then be unable to reproduce and wipe out the Muslim population. And so polio continued in India. And now you look at, you know, Nicki Minaj the other day. Oh, my cousin's friend's uncle's hairdresser, you know, is impotent. Well, it's the same thing. And it's it's the, the same stories are told. You have the same things that spread over and over. There it was Indian Muslims. Here, why did I know it would be Southern Christian evangelicals? Well, they've got, I'm sorry, a tribal group that is mm. firmly against a democratic president. Had Trump won, you know, there would have been two issues. You wouldn't have had, you know, the Southern Christian evangelicals being like they're being. But what you would have had is an incompetent distribution of the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you would have had states fighting for it. I mean, he would have just been like, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. <laughs> totally. and, That's a pretty uh, good impression. None of the brothers do good impressions. That's a pretty good Trump impression you just rolled out. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, he would have blamed the states for the vaccines not getting out. He would have had no distribution plan. He would have been. Well, he didn't. But, <laughs> we, yeah. So we saw it happen. He didn't have a distribution yeah. plan. He was already yeah. blaming the states for everything. What do you make of the fact that Fox News, by the way, has 90% plus vaccination rate and that they have stricter requirements than even the United States government is implementing. Well, that's because you have two things. Fox News is a fraud, but Fox News's entire business model is promoting tribalism. You know, so of course, you know, if you're, you're going to look at their viewership, their viewership, is gonna be, they're going to have a very, very high incidence of COVID infections. And someday someone will do the study and that'll you're going to you're going that's going to be obvious. But why are they getting it? Because they don't fall for this garbage. They're making money off of the tribalism. All of these mm-hmm. people are making the money. That's why the United States is in a fundamentally different circumstance than than you had in any other country, than in countries in, in Africa, than in India, than in where you had, you know, outside forces coming in of scientists and the rest who were coming in and outside governments coming in and saying, you know, this is, let us, let us help you. Let us do this. Let us give you money. Let us, you know, do things to get the government on our side to promote this. Well, no matter what you do, you've got these rich bazillionaires who are completely protected who have a financial interest in continuing to keep the tribalism going and knowing that the minute they turn away from it, they're reversing their business model. If they say no vaccines work, well, suddenly everybody's going to go off and go to like psycho news or whatever the other. Well, it's like it's like Trump. It's like Trump telling his people to get vaccinated. They've created this monster that now is bigger than them and they can't control it. And you saw them kind of try to slip out of that for a second, like with the insurrection, when all of a sudden you saw them start to turn on Trump for like half a beat. You saw like Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity speak out for like the slimmest second. And everybody flipped out on that side and said, I'm never watching Fox News again. I'm turning to Newsmax. I'm turning to OAN. And then they went hard right. They took a hard turn because they were scared of losing those people. One of the things that I find interesting, Kurt, also are these internet communities that have come up. I know I've seen you post about them, but on the last episode, we were talking about a website called sorryantivaxer.com. There's also a Reddit community called r Herman Cain Award. And these websites both show basically all the people, the anti-vaxxers who are speaking out, who are vehemently anti-vax and then have the tragic story of 
passing away, of, of dying of COVID, um, oftentimes within days or weeks of them expressing their anti-vax views and telling people to not get vaccinated. I mean, what do you make of these online communities that come up? I've seen they come, they've come under fire from the right, but I think they are a warning sign. I think people on that I side think, should take that and say, hey, maybe I should take this thing seriously. I think they're helpful. It is way past time that this country stop hiding what is going on. Anybody who says that COVID is the flu or is like the flu has no friggin' clue what is actually going on, what, what COVID does. COVID is, you know, we've already got some studies coming out that COVID is likely a vascular disease, that it is it's infecting vascular systems which is, and if you think about it, why are we having organs shut down? Why is it the first thing that's actually being attacked now are gastrointestinal systems? You know, why when the, when the funeral homes and the medical examiners are cutting them open, are they finding, you know, blood clot shaped like pancakes? This is not like, <laughs> oh, I died. It's horrible. And the problem is that this country you know, we're so we're so caught up in, you know, let's 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 avert our eyes. Let's not let's not show. You. No, I want to rub people's faces in it. I want to have people look and say, does this look like the friggin flu to you? I wish there was a way that we could take cameras into a covid unit and just leave mm. them there and let people watch. Especially the people who are outside protesting that hospital, yeah. pretending yeah. that there aren't, that the ICUs aren't at full capacity. It's ridiculous. And Correct. nobody is celebrating this, by the way. I just wanna no. say, I know you have a question. Yeah. No one's celebrating it. And like we, we posted the other day, for example, Kurt, we posted about Laura Loomer who had come down with a bad case of COVID and she has been spewing all this disinformation and anti-vax sentiment. And Laura Loomer kind of fired back and was very upset and said that, oh, look, the liberals are happy and they're gloating that I have COVID. No, I'm like, no one's gloating that you have COVID. We're concerned and we're upset because you are spreading the same anti-vax nonsense that's going to get someone else sick and you're going to kill somebody else because of what you are spreading. That's why I'm mad. That's why I'm upset. And nobody is celebrating your sickness and no one is celebrating the deaths of these people. What we are angry about is the fact that you are killing people. And believe it or not, we are trying to help you. This is not some sort of mental jujitsu. Jitsu. I saw this crazy Breitbart article that we were speaking about that said that uh, cra crazy, 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 crazy. We're not telling you to get vaccinated because we actually don't want you to get vaccinated. We actually want you to get vaccinated because we want you to live and your leaders Fox News, all these people are trying to kill you, yet you are listening to them. And I think you need to snap out of it if that's what you're doing. Kurt, that's what we call on the podcast a, a, a Brett rant right there. That's 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 <laughs> an epic Brett rant of, of proportions. And Usually reserved for when we don't have a guest, Kurt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is, this is brand new. Yeah, Laura Loomer, I mean, there's something going on with Delta where people get it they feel an enormous pain and then they feel better and they think, Oh, it's gone. Mm. And I've noticed that she's going, Oh, I feel better. And she's getting into the, Oh, it's over. And it's like, it may not be. How angry does it make you when you see the Fox news is the Newsmax spewing the misinformation and then without any repercussions sort of happening to them, how angry does that make you on a, on a personal level and a professional level? And I actually think in addition to that, didn't the Fox community like send, send their followers after you at, at a certain point in a targeted campaign? I mean, the anti-vaxxers certainly hate my guts because they've got a cognitive dissonance. You know, they think that their Facebook page is as valid as peer-reviewed studies. Uh, there was this joke uh, somebody published the other day of the, you know, the New England Journal of Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I think I saw that meme. We'll pull, we'll pull it up for everybody to see. And that's the problem is that this people aren't equal. You know, everybody's viewpoint isn't the same. Why, when you get sick, if you know as much as the doctors, why, when you get sick, 
do you go to the hospital? Why not have Uncle Frank just treat you on the kitchen table? He's got Facebook. Go on Facebook and say, you know, here's what I did. Frank you know, did his I Uncle down, Frank did his yeah, own Uncle research. Phil, he should yeah, do the surgery. I, I Uncle Frank's got CBS this. Yes, and I got, you know, a, 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 an oxygen <laughs> reader. And here's it's what so you know, now what do I do? What's oh the next God. level? You know, get me a butter knife. Let me let me she needs a trach tube. Um, you know, I mean, it's infuriating mm -hmm. because Tucker Carlson is a can I curse on this program? Absolutely. Go for it. Fucking moron. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> a, a sociopath, a white supremacist. He doesn't care if people live, die. I don't even think he contemplates it at all. His mm -hmm. thing is, I'm going to ride this to the ends of the earth. And if people die, not my problem. I'm vaccinated. My family's vaccinated. You know, you have Fox trying to make money. You have politicians trying to stay in power. You have tribal mindsets being pushed by those two right. with a with a complete hatred. I mean, hatred. People go, I love this country. I just hate most of the people in it. Uh, hatred of half the country. And, and that, that Breitbart thing, the reason why they want us to get vaccinated is because if they tell us to, we won't. You know, and I, there was a line in there that everybody sort of missed where he said, I can't think of any other reason why they would be doing this. <laughs> it's like, you're a sociopath. You can't comprehend why people would be saying, don't die. You know, what? Because everything is politics. At the end of the day here, we're looking at objective truths. We're not looking at someone's subjective research on Facebook and their own views. Wait, wait, wait. Please are... do not call that research. <laughs> it's not research. We're uh, looking at no absolutely. Threw it in quotes. You know, he threw it in quotes. I, I did. I, I did throw it in quotes. Yeah, but research. Kurt, <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming on the Midas Touch podcast today. We appreciate you. Everybody Everybody check out on Scrib Books, The Big Lie, The Modern Anti-Vaxxer Movement, which was incredibly prescient and describes what uh, we are now seeing. Uh, Kurt Eichenwald, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I want to talk now briefly about feels before getting into the news. That's F-E-A-L-S. Feels is a better way to feel better, a premium CBD product that will keep your head clear, help you feel your best, and that has proven to greatly reduce anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover addiction with CBD. It's just really good for you and it makes you feel better. I'll tell you a little bit about how I've used this. And the great thing about the CBD too is it has multiple uses. So basically, and you should check, you know, the amounts that you're taking, but if you take a little bit, basically CBD could help you like with clarity. So in the morning when I wanna wake up and I wanna be focused and I have podcasts to do and videos to edit, I put a little bit of CBD under my tongue from feels and then I am focused. I have clarity, I'm able to think straight. And the great thing is if I hang, have anxiety, I could take a little bit more and I could calm down a little bit. And before bed, if I'm having trouble sleeping, which honestly with everything going on in the world, I often do have trouble sleeping. I'll take a little bit more of the CBD, put it under my tongue and I will have a relaxing sleep, not wake up in the middle of the night, just sleep straight through. I cannot recommend CBD enough, but specifically I cannot recommend feels enough. And as I was saying, you just place a few drops of the feels under your tongue and you'll feel the difference within minutes. The key is you just got to find that right dose that's important and for everybody that is different. And like I said, there are different things that feels will help you with everything from clarity to sleep to anxiety. And you just got to dial it in and get the right amount and it will make you feel so much better. It really helps with all these issues. And I know I experience all, literally all those things. I have trouble thinking straight sometimes. I have a lot of anxiety sometimes and I have trouble sleeping and I cannot recommend feels enough if you experience the same. In fact, feels even offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience so that you could find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of your CBD and joining the Feels monthly membership makes your self-care easy. You save money on every order and you could pause or cancel at any time. So there are really no risks here. Just 
Just do right by yourself. Take care of yourself. Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Midas. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash M-E-I-D-A-S. And you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. 50% off your first order with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash M-E-I-D-A-S, that's Midas, to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. That's feels.com slash Midas. Highly recommend Feels. Thank you so much to Feels for supporting this show. Mitch McConnell, moving on. Mitch, 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 Mitch. Mitch could use a little bit of Feels. Mitch, <laughs> Mitch seems like a high stress guy. Mitch <laughs> McConnell. Did you hear that uh, Trump just hates him so much? I mean, after all the kind of cow towing that Mitch had to do, that Trump is trying to primary him. He's doing a whole remove Mitch campaign, which doesn't surprise you. But that's why there are no you can heroes here, have, Ben. There are no heroes which, here in this story. <laughs> here's what's frustrating about this: is we know anyone who Trump endorses and puts his arm around loses. So I don't know what to make of this situation because. That ultimately makes McConnell the front runner again. That is actually true, Jordy, that right now Trump has the opposite of the Midas touch, uh, you know, but it just goes to show you, though, and it's just such a weird thing. It just shows you how weak these GQPers are at the end of the day is that, you know, at this point, and you should have known well in advance, but definitely by this point that anything you do with this fucking evil, evil horrible human being and Donald Trump, probably one of the most evil in history, is he's going to screw you over. And yet you have people still, and it's really out of the weakness that they have for themselves, but they still think that they can do a deal with the guy. It's the strangest thing in the world. And what it really comes down to, though, is it's losers. It's losers. He attracts losers like Matt Gates who can attract 12 people alone <laughs> if he does a rally. But when he does a rally with Trump, he gets to speak in front of a crowd of crazy losers who show up to Trump's loser rallies. So they these losers want audiences of losers. And Trump knows how to deliver the loser audience, basically. And you see McConnell on, and other news about McConnell. He's running around his state taking credit for all of the initiatives that the Democrats have uh, been course, responsible for. Like we said, there's no winners um, here. They're all losers. These are all such fucking losers. <laughs> and at the same time, he's basically refusing to raise the debt limit while uh, basically bragging about all of these initiatives in his state that are beneficial to a state. Yeah, because Mitch and the Republicans want America de to default on our debts because they want America's credit to be downgraded. And the only time in history that happened was because of the Republicans. I believe it was, well, President Obama was president. And this is a Republican tactic that they use. Democrats will always raise the debt limit. And this whole debt limit thing is like probably the dumbest thing we have in our politics that we have to raise the debt limit every whatever amount of months or years in order to pay our bills. Like who created this ridiculous system? So McConnell's whole concept now is, oh, Democrats want to spend the money on this project. Well, then they could raise the debt limit by themselves. They have 50 votes in the Senate. They could do 50 plus one and they could do this all on their own. So Mitch is refusing to do it. But what I really frustrates me here is that we still have people in the Democratic Party who are listening to Mitch McConnell on other issues and aren't getting rid of the filibuster as we need to pass legislation like voting rights legislation like infrastructure and yes I'm talking about you Kirsten Cinema. yes I'm talking about you Joe Manchin and this is an issue that we are just constantly going to be encountering and listen if Mitch McConnell will not raise the debt limit so that America does not default on its debts he is not going to allow you to pass any sort of bipartisan legislation whether it's about voting rights or infrastructure or anything nothing will Will happen as long as you act like Mitch McConnell has the power, which he should not. And the only reason that he does have the power is because of those two Democratic senators. And it is disgraceful. And what we need to do is we need to be calling up these senators and telling them, giving them a piece of our mind. We need to call up Joe Manchin. We need to call up Kristen Sinema's office and we need to tell them exactly what they need to be doing. It's getting ridiculous. And you talk about ridiculous uh, pieces of parliamentary procedure that gets in the way of kind of common sense uh, reform and actually getting things done. I mean, the wackiest rule in the world 
is this need that you have to go to a Senate parliamentarian that nobody even knows really who the Senate parliamentarian is. I mean, obviously people know who the Senate, par- mar- Senate parliamentarian is, but like most people have no clue who this person is or what they do or what their role even is. And this is a, an individual who gets to make decisions whether or not a specific uh, line item uh, is within the ambit of a reconciliation bill, whether it deals with uh, budgetary issues, whether it deals with the power of the purse that Congress has, or whether it's an extraneous matter. And so you basically have this bureaucrat who just makes rulings and basically says, this shall be included as a budget reconciliation. This shall not be included in budget reconciliation. And then if it is included in budget reconciliation, then you can pass it with a simple majority of votes, but then you need cinema and mansion to allow you to pass legislation because it's 50-50. If it's not subject to reconciliation and it falls outside of the reconciliation, then the Republicans can filibuster or the other party that's not in power can filibuster and not allow legislation to be passed. And let me remind everybody about the Senate parliamentarian and their limitations here, because listen, the Democrats don't have to listen to her. We have enough votes. Vice President Kamala Harris can overrule the Senate parliamentarian easily. These are recommendations. And guess what? I would say the Republicans would do this if they were in power, but they have done this in the past. They have actually fired the Senate parliamentarian in the past. And I'm not necessarily saying if Democrats should do that or not. And I think one of the issues here, Ben, like you noted, is that we have these two Democratic senators who won't vote for these legislation. And if we did that, would probably cause a big fuss about it and are probably holding back and saying, oh, well, if you do that, well, I'm definitely not voting for it. So we're in a bit of a pickle here, I I gotta say. But I think we need to do everything we can right now as Democrats to pass this stuff. This is why Senate Democrats were elected. This is why... This is what it's like what I was saying uh, to Kurt, though, before. Right. It's like Democrats have to do everything right in order for people to be happy. Democrats need to pass historic legislation in order for people to be happy, while Republicans could just sit on their asses. But this is important. We need to act. And here I got Joe Manchin's phone number right here. How about you all take this down? His phone number for his congressional office is 202-224-3954. That's 202 202- Two two four three nine five four. Why don't you give him a call and tell him to support filibuster reform? Tell him to support a carve out to the filibuster. Tell him why you want infrastructure. Tell him why you want these democratic policies. Tell him why you want voting rights. Call his office and make your voice heard. Make sure when you call, of course, uh, you are respectful in what you say and how you get the message across, but make sure you get that message across. And one of the things that Joe Manchin has been privately saying, it's been reported that he wants Congress to take a strategic pause until at least 2022 before voting on Biden's $3.5 trillion spending package. And we've talked about this on the podcast, too, and, you know, framing it as a three point five trillion dollar spending package when really the entire package pays for itself Mm -hmm. and is dispersed over a 10 year period is probably a misnomer and basically deals with very basic things that we need in this country. Um, uh, But Manchin wants to delay that apparently. And, you know, there is a timeline of, you know, people want that to be voted on um, by, uh, uh, you know, by the end of this month. Um, That was going to be the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Manchin needs to step it up and we need Democrats to continue to put pressure on people like Manchin and Cinema. And that really starts with you also by you making these phone calls, by you just showing and making your voice heard. And as Ben said, do it respectfully, but make your voice heard because we need them to act. Our country needs this change and we need to keep pushing the ball forward here for everybody in this country. These are all issues that Americans support. You know, the idea of a filibuster would be rooted in the fact that a political party that does not represent the views of America, but finds its way into power, can be passing legislation that supports a small amount of Americans, that supports just the billionaires, for example. 
But what the filibuster's been used for is to prevent actually what Americans want from getting passed and has created a full standstill within Congress from getting bills passed. Again, overwhelmingly, Democrats are on the right side of all of the political issues. That's what gives me confidence going into 2022. That's what gives me confidence in all of these elections that by and large people by 60% or more, in some cases it's like 70% or more, side with the democratic policies because they're pro-democracy. They're for people not dying. Um, they're to make the economy better. It's to promote education of our children and to be respectful to our neighbors, to be respectful to our community. And that those issues are winning issues because they're what's right for people. And we have to, as we go into 2022, remember that these issues are on our side. Got to stay motivated. We got to stay excited about this process. And we can't let the GQP bring us down. i end with this. How Spark said it so great. He's like, you know what? All these GQPers are acting crazy, but that's kind of good news in a way, because mm -hmm. they would not be acting crazy if they were winning. If they were winning, they'd be able to do what maybe they used to do, which was in the privacy of their living rooms or in the privacy of their their basements or in wherever the shops they visit. They'd go, well, what do you think about this? So what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> right. And now and now you've got the, you know, army of Karens and the army of. People like that, you know, in the stores freaking out. You got the you got the men with their barbarian helmets. And uh, I saw that one guy that uh, Walter Masterson spoke to. He will he had a, he had the same kind of outfit as the shaman. But like he was like a mini guy singing songs. It's like when you get the knockoff the, version at the bargain bin or like the <laughs> Halloween Depot. Yeah, that was so bizarre. But but that's what we're up against. We're up against those bizarre zombie, you know, and Brett, you've been posting some videos on the Midas account um, from some great. They look like uh, zombie movies. If you put some zombie journalists. cinematic music <laughs> out there, it would be like a, if you watch them without sound, it legitimately looks like Shaun of the Dead or something or Dawn of the Dead. We got to make a, a remake of I Am Legend with Will Smith where you're just the last person who's vaccinated and you're around all these anti-vaxxer quackers. Well, I hope that I hope we never have to make a movie like that, but that would be uh, that would be quite the movie, Jordy. <laughs> but let me also say on the flip side, let me tell you what happens when democratic policies are implemented, because we're seeing the results of it here in California and California right now has the lowest covid case rate in the country and is adding jobs at three times the rate of the rest of the country. So this is what happens when democratic policies are implemented. And I'm not going to say California is perfect but I love California and I'm actually okay when right-wing conservative talk show hosts, right-wing fascist <clears throat> talk show hosts, when they call California a hell, hell hole and whatever, I'm okay with that because I don't want other people coming here because I like <laughs> it here and I it's already crowded enough. But I am happy with my state and you compare that to all these GQP states, to Texas, to Missouri, to Florida, and you see what a real hell hole looks like and you see what failed leadership really looks like when you see ICUs full and you see that Democrats are actually working for the people and in the interests of the people and against these headwinds of this crazy psychotic GOP. But luckily they are dwindling every day. They are desperate. We are the majority. Now we need to bring it home and convince our leaders to do the right thing and pass the legislation we need. So please make those phone calls to Joe Manchin. Look up Kristen Cinema's number. Make those phone calls to her office and let's make real change and let's make sure that we continue to move the country forward despite any of the barriers that come in our way. It starts starts with you and it starts with movements like the Midas Mighty and that's why we are so thankful that you are listening to us today and that's why we are so thankful that you are with us on this journey to fight for our democracy. Special thanks to our guest Kurt Eichenwald for joining us on the Midas Touch podcast today 
And special thanks to all the Midas Mighty for your continued support of this podcast, for your continued support of the Midas Mighty movement, for all you do in the communities to fight for democracy. Also, special thank to our sponsor, Feels. Make sure you go to feels.com slash Midas. That's feels.com slash Midas. And special shout out to our other sponsor, Wild Alaskan Company. And make sure you go to wildalaskancompany.com slash Midas. That's wildalaskancompany.com slash Midas. And while you're at it, make sure you give them a shout and let them know that you heard about them through the Midas Touch podcast. Give the Midas Touch podcast a five-star review. That always helps with making sure that Midas Touch always stays in the top podcast across the charts. We appreciate you as always. And Jordy, shout out to the Midas Mighty!